Hello, this video is created with the VIP Kid iPad Users Group in mind. A lot of people use iPads for teaching for VIP Kid, and a lot of people also use the iPad as a great backup. And I like to use my I used my iPad for my first 1,000 classes and that's why I created this group because the iPad is a great backup. It's also great to use for your classes every day if that's what you want to do. In order to use the iPad for teaching, you need to make sure that you download the HD app. The HD app has a white corner and that is your app to use on your iPad. There's also a solid orange app and that is the one that you can use on your phone you can also download that one to your iPad because you can use your iPad just like you would your phone on this solid orange but you cannot teach on that so on the HD app you will find you have two settings okay when you press on that you will get to your classes on one of the pages and then up here in the corner you press home and you will find your portal and you can use this portal just like you would on your browser um, or on your phone no not on your phone app but on your browser or on your computer you can go to the portal um, if you have done that before but this is all of your information for VIP kid Press done up here and you will find your classes. When you are 30 minutes before your class, the very top, very first class will turn red. At that time, you can press on it and then you can enter your class 30 minutes before class. The camera itself does not open until 10 minutes before class. And if you watch the other videos, you can see what the classroom looks like. It's basically, um, if you've seen the classroom on a computer, it's basically the middle section without the pull-out sides. Everything is there in the iPad, it's just a little more compact. Um, now, when you are teaching on the iPad, I like to do landscape mode. I call it horizontal or landscape mode. And then you also want to make sure that you have the camera on the left-hand side. You can teach with the iPad vertically with the camera in the middle, which seems more natural because you and your student will be on the top in the middle, but some changes were made so that I have found that it always works horizontally, but sometimes when you're in the classroom in a vertical setting, um, you might find that the classroom isn't working and you might have to switch it to horizontal. So in order for me to avoid that problem, I go ahead and just do horizontal when I'm using the iPad. Now, I would also recommend that you would have a Bluetooth keyboard. This is a new iPad for me and I have a keyboard that is attached to the case like this. Bluetooth keyboard, but it's attached. Um, there is a key up and down. And if I'm teaching younger kids, I really don't use it that much. I will use my whiteboard a lot during class. But if you do have a Bluetooth keyboard, you can go ahead and put that down below and use that to type with. I think that's a lot easier. And it's also easier when you're doing your feedback. So if you want more information about using the iPad for VIP Kid, um, I would recommend that you would go to the VIP Kid iPad users group on Facebook and this is the group it looks like this and if you go to the topic section at the very top there's a topic section and you will find a bunch of things that we talk about like headset information iPad stands lighting lines on the iPad um, Ethernet hookup how to do feedback speed test information and there's a really cool thing I would recommend for all iPad users to use, which is called the Screenshot One Touch. I just um, found out about this recently, and Aubrey, Aubrey Bowser, she created this process. It's a little bit of a process, but once you get it set up, you will have just one little button floating on your screen that you can just press and get a screenshot with just the touch of a button. I have mine right here. It is great. 
it is great and you only have to do it once and you can put this anywhere you want on the iPad and whenever you touch it it will take a screenshot so if you're in a class and you need a screenshot it's a lot easier than touching what you have to touch two things at once a lot of times I'll just use my phone in order to get a screenshot another really good thing in that list is um, how to check your ping when you're using your iPad there's also an announcement section and I have made some videos along the way for for iPad users how to use your iPad and some other ideas for iPad users so please go check that out and join the group and if you have not liked and subscribed my channel please do so at this time I hope you enjoy this video let me know if it was helpful to you and let me know if you have any other ideas that you want to add to help out other iPad users. Thank you, have a great day, and happy teaching. My name is Cindy Bennett, and welcome to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. If you are not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate your subscription. And I am going to be, today, I'm going to be talking about another reward that you can use as an iPad user. With VIP Kid, a lot of times we see a lot of videos of teachers that use a lot of digital rewards, and VIP Kid also has AR stickers for computer users. But if you use an iPad regularly, you will not have access to these built in digital rewards. And if you use it as a backup, you might be surprised that you cannot use digital rewards for an iPad lesson. So the iPad is a really great tool for teaching for VIP Kid, but um, it's also used as a backup. Some people like to use it for traveling and then they go from the computer to the iPad and they're like, what am I gonna do for rewards if I'm used to using digital rewards? So I want to just show you a few ideas that you can do that are also minimalist because when you are traveling, you don't wanna bring you know, your whole entire prop desk, right, to the lesson. But your whiteboard can be a huge benefit to your class in many different ways. You can also use this as a reward. The VIP Kid whiteboard is really cool because you have two sides to it. And I really like whatever this is made of. It's a harder plastic than the, the ones that are similar to it at the dollar store. And I got this from the um, VIP Kid store and I think it was ten dollars and it was sent right to my house I think I used um, one of the gift cards or something that I could use for the store so it didn't cost cost me the full ten dollars I kinda like it because it does have the logo on it and kinda makes you look official as a VIP kid teacher but it also works very well also so today I'd just like to talk to you a little bit about how you can do a digital reward digital reward excuse me not digital reward one two three I would like to talk to you today about how to use a drawing reward during your class this is the idea that I found on the drawing reward group on Facebook and there these were not my original idea you can also go to Pinterest and you can find these patterns and you can print them out I do have them in a file on the Facebook group for VIP Kid iPad users as well. And these are the, some of the ideas that I have. These are these are like six step ones. This obviously is a tiger. This is a rabbit. This is a bird. Okay, so these are some of the ideas. There are many different um, patterns that you can get like I said on Pinterest and other places that are similar or you could even make up your own once you get going so what I will do for the really little kids I will just draw a circle for the first star and then throughout the class I will add to the drawing okay so and if the student is able to I might ask the student can you get a piece of paper and a pencil and you can draw with me and then I'll tell the student to draw a circle and then the student I'll have the student draw 
two more circles and I'll just keep saying circle circle and I'll have the student repeat after me triangle triangle and I will do this like with every star I will add a step and I will ask the student if the student knows what this is going to be and eventually the student figures it out so I kind of try to draw in a way that the student is doesn't really know until the very end what the drawing is going to be now if you have a really smart student and they're drawing things quickly you might be able to do two in a class time um, this that's the bird and I like to do the rabbit this way I will draw a circle I'll say what is it and then I will draw another circle the rabbit has a circle down here and then I will draw two more circles and so they know it's some kind of an animal but they still really don't know and I'll just keep going like that and I'll say what is it and then I'll do this and then what I'm doing is one step every star so I don't usually draw this quickly I will just draw one step with every star and I'll be like what is it and then when I go like this the light turns on and they get it so this is the rabbit I really like that one because it kind of keeps them in suspense throughout the class and so that is the drawing reward with steps we've got the bird we have I have some other ones that I printed out so I will just kind of keep these on the side if I need to re refer to my notes and like I said I will kind of it's kind of like draw and reveal so that at the very end they get the picture so these are the ones I have so you can use this say you're traveling you could use this for any age because you know the really little kids you could draw it yourself and if it's the older kids you could have them draw with you and if you have a student that is really active and moves around a lot <laughs> it's a really great reward because they really enjoy interacting with you you could also pick something that goes along with the lesson like if you're doing um, animal pick an animal if you're doing my body pick you know a person and so you can also vary the colors and then you could go ahead and ask the kids if they for the colors the names of all the different colors you could do that as well you could make a scene you could make one during class and then on the blank slide you could make another different um, drawing if you still have time so drawing rewards you do not need to necessarily be an artist you don't have to really be good at drawing you just kind of you know find something that has steps to it and then you just go along with the steps so this is a really great reward for people who use an iPad you don't need any kind of digital props it's also good for a minimalist all you need is your whiteboard and your pen which you're probably using your whiteboard anyway and it's great for iPad users but obviously if you use your computer this is something that I use at different times in my lessons I will vary my rewards extensively I don't keep the same rewards I do use Google Slides I do use Apple to uh, stars to apples I also use drawing rewards I also use 2d props and I plan on just sharing more of my ideas for rewards and keeping in mind that iPad users are not going to be able to use the digital rewards but there are many many other things that you can use and also keeping in mind that a lot of iPad users are traveling teachers so they might not have you know drawers and drawers of props and you don't really need drawers and drawers of props if you are using a digital reward you can use the other side for your classes like if you're say you're doing um, you know spelling and I had a student today that had a hard time with the word were and where so you can use your whiteboard for your lesson itself and then you can turn it around and use the back for the digital or for the drawing reward and so obviously a lot of us uh, VIP kid teachers also have multiple 
um, <laughs> whiteboards. So I'm pretty sure that everybody has a whiteboard. I also have this one right here um, behind me, which is also magnetic. So sometimes I will also um, just throw stuff up there that have magnets on it. Right now, most of the time, I put up my rewards on my board with the blue, I don't know what you call this. I call it sticky tack. But if I have rewards or things that I'm going to put up here, sometimes I have magnets, which I use these for my um, trials. But sometimes I do not have magnets. And I will just keep on the side of my desk, I will keep five little pieces of this stuff that I will use periodically throughout my class. Like today, I use this. I use these stars that have balls on them and we talked about the different types of balls and that kind of just extends the lesson a little bit so I don't always have magnets and I just keep my sticky tack right here close by so I hope this is inspirational to you and helps you to add a little something to your classroom let me know how you do digital rewards and if you like them and let me know if this video helped you and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and happy teaching.